Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top, beautiful summer day here at Bugs in a Jar Farm here in the collapse of everything on July 23rd, 2023 here in the Finger Lakes of New York. It is a gorgeous day uh, to contemplate collapse and uh, so we're just going to do kind of a straight ahead uh, little slice of doom or porn from medium.com and uh, I, uh, I always like to bring new voices uh, into the doomer debate. I getting a little bit of a chuckle out of, I guess, that video yesterday from this mystery man, C, uh, who came out of nowhere, uh, seems to really be stirring up the uh, clickbaiters. And for the several of you who want to read C's complete paper, just for the record, C has not given me permission to uh, release the whole thing. Uh, so anyway, I think I probably pissed the guy off, which really was not my intention. So uh, today, you know, this is what I don't get about medium.com. I have been... Uh, I have been on medium.com since October and I, I, you know, I think that I've heard of everybody. Then here is this fellow named Eric Michaels, and that is E-R-I-K, Eric Michaels, never heard of this man uh, in my entire life. Uh, does Eric Michaels have a self description uh, let's see Eric Michaels does not have one word to describe himself what his uh, resume looks like but anyway I like Eric so I thought it, this would be a fine day to introduce a new doomer voice Eric Michaels and his straight ahead little slice of collapse simply titled Collapse in the End of Industrial Civilization. And what I like about this is, you know, Eric, uh, he has all of these links. I like it when people back up what they're saying. So if you go on here, uh, he has links to, good Lord, probably 30 other uh, sources which will probably each have 30 other sources and this is how you go down the collapse rabbit hole but this is uh, after going down all of these this is what Eric Michaels has come up with um, okay uh, right. too much hubris and stupidity abound hmm too much hubris and stupidity abound, and one recent example in particular highlights this scenario more than others, and he has a link to that, so I don't even know which one he chose which one he chose. For quite some time now, around a decade, around a decade, this man has been out there for a decade, never heard of this dude till uh, last night. I have been warning others about the inevitable collapse of industrial civilization unfolding around us as I type this. I realize that I am a relative newcomer, although I stayed in rather small circles until more recently. Not only is our way of life ending, but the very fabric of how we live is changing. For instance, cities are now functionally extinct, obsolete by 2050. Okay, we're 
He's making the 2050 call. By 2050, cities will become a hollowed out shell of their former selves, and plenty of examples already exist. Large cities will not survive this century. And he has a link to uh, that. Ghost towns exist all over. Previous locations of once booming areas of so-called human progress and manifest destiny. Most of these towns became ghost towns because the source of their economic prosperity was depleted, leaving little for the population to make a living from. Jobs dried up and people had to move, leaving an insufficient tax base for the local government to operate with. Once this happens, a town effectively slowly dies. Utility companies find it difficult to operate with an insufficient number of customers and usually ser service is curtailed whereby the town becomes a sacrifice zone. Um, while ghost towns are numerous and many no longer have any evidence of their existence, Cities are much larger and generally have much more infrastructure, which leaves more of a reminder of its existence. Ghost cities are far less common, although there are still plenty of examples here too, such as Centralia, Pennsylvania, Pitcher, Oklahoma, Pripyat, Ukraine, and many other lesser well-known places. It is very difficult for most people to fathom what life for humans will be like once industrial civilization ceases to exist, which is why I point out ghost towns which can be visited. Some of these ghost towns are ancient, such as Machu Picchu and Mesa Verde. Others are more recent. Uh, anyway, then he, he uh, gives you a whole bunch of links to uh, how you can follow that rabbit hole. Okay, moving ahead. It has become quite clear to me that a large number of people, like 99.9% .9 of the planet, still don't realize the power of the exponential function and how quickly things can unravel in a complex society. Recently, I posted a link to Joseph Tainter's book, The Collapse of Complex Societies, and I highly recommend it, and I will second his recommendation. I have previously posted Chris Clugston's video based on his book, Blip, which I also highly recommend. I have not read Blip. So I can't uh, let you know about that. <clears throat> Today I post a summary of Clugston's new book, Industrialism, Our Commitment to Impermanence. And he has a link to that if you want to hear the summary of Chris Clugston's new book, Industrialism. Clugston predicts that industrial civilization will end by 2050. A rather optimistic prediction. Still, humans do have a way of being very clever, and we have been able to kick the can down the road for a considerably long time. We are now coming to the end of that road, however. I generally see a refusal of most people to accept the fact that ecological overshoot is a predicament with an outcome rather than a problem with a solution. This is typically due to denial of reality and optimism bias and possibly also due to an ignorance of the fact that peak oil 
is in the rear view mirror, people still are constantly and consistently looking for solutions, not seemingly realizing that none exist. Sure, there are things that can be done to reduce the shock of the landing by reducing overshoot, but it is rather apparent that none of those things are yet having any real impact, if any impact at all. Instead, I continue to see the ongoing bargaining to maintain civilization, with some folks deciding that moving to rural areas while still enjoying the perks of civilization is the answer. One recent article in the bargaining department from Katie Singer has to do with developing technology that is more ecologically sound. This is a nice and noble idea, but one which is not likely to accomplish much because we are in collapse now. Many, if not most, advanced technologies are likely to become obsolete within the next 30 years. And this is another one that I could put into the, uh, that I could put into the, uh, the panic is overrated, but the trend is real. Uh, I'm on the fence about that one, I guess. I realize that many people are suffering from denial of reality and optimism bias and don't quite understand how technology use has reduced or removed negative feedbacks which once used to keep our numbers in balance with the rest of nature. This has allowed population growth to literally decimate other species, not just through population growth, but also by all the growth in technology use as a result. Pollution loading is yet another symptom predict predicament of overshoot, which is the result of both of these issues. Population growth and concomitant growth of technology use and one can easily make the connection to marine wildlife of all types, especially seabirds, with a new disease called plasticosis. If that isn't enough to churn your stomach, how about some flesh-eating Vibrio vulnificus? The sargassum seaweed also contributes to the plasticosis disease mentioned above, and also provides a source of hydrogen sulfide, a topic I have written about before in this article, which he has the link to, with its implication in extinction events. <clears throat> Besides pollution loading, another symptom predicament that we are all familiar with, climate change, is also in the news with a new study from Johan Rockström, along with a hefty list of other authors, is written about in these two articles here and here, and yet another strange development, another stu new study, indicates that precisely what I have been saying for years is true. None of this will be surprising to my regular readers, who are used to seeing articles like this, still, I have always secretly, uh, I have always secretly uh, hoped that I would be proved wrong. Related to the predicament of climate change is the focus on emissions, another symptom predicament and the attempts to use yet more technology or more complex technology to tackle said emissions. Art Berman writes two new articles attacking the idea 
that renewable energy harvesting devices have a higher EROEI than fossil fuels. And then he gives you a link to both of those articles. Something that I would have thought common sense would tell a person considering that these devices are made both from fossil hydrocarbon energy and with said fossil energy and cannot exist in anywhere near even current amounts without those fossil fuels. The plastics, concrete, and steel required for the devices themselves require high heat that is impractical to be supplied by electricity due to the temperatures required and the fact that any outages would destroy the furnaces used for that high heat. That is a risk most factory owners would rather avoid. Of course, road building to provide access to these devices also requires fossil fuels along with all the new infrastructure required to transmit new electrical generation from these devices. Mining for the other materials these devices are made from also require fossil fuels despite a few mining vehicles being powered by batteries. Most of the world's mining equipment runs on diesel, not batteries, and this equipment is prohibitively expensive. Speaking of emissions, and I know that I am rambling, but there is a point to all this, much of the northeastern quadrant of the U.S. was, and will soon be again, blanketed in thick smoke due to the wildfires in Canada, this will become more common at a t as time moves forward as droughts and warmer temperatures bring wildfires to areas that previously rarely, if ever, saw them. Now, take the contents of this article and apply these conditions to the infrastructure we depend upon daily bridge collapses are becoming rather commonplace with a railroad bridge in Montana and then the I-95 bridge in Pennsylvania happening just in the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> As time moves forward, all infrastructure is going to be asked to endure new challenges as conditions change, extreme weather events become more extreme and the energy to facilitate infrastructure improvements, replacements, and repairs and maintenance become less available. There you go. As, uh, like I consistently point out, Live now, live now, while you still can. So, uh, I guess it looks like Michael Dowd, uh, you know, who has completely taken over the, uh, the collapse interviews, Michael Dowd uh, interviews Eric Michaels and another medium writer, Steve Bull. Uh, you can find those interviews if you want to hear from, Mer from Eric over at Michael's channel. Uh, I don't know, I was just... Uh, talking to Michael Dowd a couple of days ago, and uh, <laughs> brother, I don't know where you get the energy to keep doing this, but uh, keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. I have a vacation rental business to run myself, 
So uh, I'm going to get back to running a vacation rental business while I still can. Bye, guys.